I'm Pastor Matthew C. Harrison. Grace and peace in Christ to all of you. As restrictions descended upon our nation, including the church, we began consulting with legal counsel and friends like the Alliance Defending Freedom, with whom the Missouri Synod has been involved in several key religious freedom Supreme Court cases. It's clear that in times of threat to public health, Constitutional case law allows for limitations to First Amendment rights, but only under strict limitations. One religious community may not be treated unlike other similar communities. A limitation must pass strict scrutiny. It must be the least restrictive means to achieve the government's aim to protect the public. Neither the synod nor the districts have any ability to control a congregation's response to the virus. Thank God. But we have all advocated that congregations follow local guidelines for the sake of the Fifth Commandment, care for our neighbors, and the Fourth Commandment, respect for legitimate authority. And you, the pastors and people, have bent over backward to be safe and continue to serve your people and the mission of the gospel of Christ's glorious and free forgiveness. Thank you. I know you're tired. Christ will sustain you in the vocations he has called you to serve. I've been in continuous contact with district presidents and many other pastors and lay people of the Missouri Synod. Our staff has been in daily contact with the Alliance Defending Freedom, First Liberty, and now also the Beckett Fund. We are now seeing a different phase in government and that is resulting in a different response from the church. As political and public will now shift toward reopening, we're informed that local and state policies are often unclear and even treat religious communities differently than others. Nor are such regulations the least restrictive means for achieving government ends. One governor proposed to open bars, restaurants, and malls while retaining a 10-person limit on all churches. Our districts involved are seeking legal redress. When none other than St. Paul, whose rights as a Roman citizen were violated, he appealed to Caesar. He used the government process available to him. The Apology to the Augsburg Confession states, the gospel not only approves outward governments, but also subjects us to them, Romans 13. Our government allows legal and other forms of redress. As Christians, congregations, and districts, it is God-pleasing when we in good faith and conscience take advantage of them. As I have carefully watched the past months unfold upon us, I have noted over and over again that one's attitude toward government actions depends greatly upon whether the virus has impacted a person's home or territory, family or church or not. I don't want anyone to view this virus in a cavalier way, and I've witnessed a few doing so. What I'm interested in is continuing to stand with the districts, pastors, and congregations of the LCMS, and particularly as the challenging issues of reopening are upon us. Feel free to contact us for information or assistance. We have helpful friends in the Alliance Defending Freedom, First Liberty and the Beckett Fund, and many others. We will make it through this. We don't quite know what's on the other side, but we know Christ has been through every cross. He's walking beside us now, and he awaits our arrival into a future determined by him alone. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.